Hi guys, this is Raj, agent of change, back with another video. I am an enterprise solutions architect working at AWS. Today we'll look into an area which could be a little confusing to the newcomers of AWS, but it is very, very important. IAM, Identity and Access Management. All right, let's dive into it. We will use two very common scenarios for this video. Scenario one, where you have one AWS account for your organization shared by different groups. Let's say admin, developer, and tester in this case. And you want to give each group different access in the same account. Scenario two, where one AWS service needs to access other AWS services. Okay, let's jump into scenario one. To understand this, first, we have to understand what is AWS policy. A policy is an object in AWS that when associated with an identity or resource, defines their permissions. Easiest way to understand this is to dive into AWS console. Type IAM into the main console then click policies. All the AWS managed policies are shown in the screen. Then we type the name of the service, let's say S3, and you see all the policies that's already defined for S3. Click S3 read only access, and this is the JSON document that shows what this policy do. This JSON has three main elements, effect, use allow or deny to indicate whether the policy allows or denies access. Then is action, which includes the list of actions that the policy allows or denies. In this case, it's allowing get and list from S3. And resources specify a list of resources to which the actions apply. In this case, it's asterisk, that means this can be executed in any bucket. And now let's click Amazon S3 full access. If you look at this JSON, instead of just allowing get and list on S3, it's allowing everything on S3 to be allowed on all resources. And just for fun, type in admin in the search box. And if you see this administrator access and this policy allows any kind of action on all the AWS resources. Now, these policies can be attached to a user, groups, or roles. So if this policy is attached to a user or group, you guessed it right, they will have the administrator access. So if we go back to our scenario, I assign some names to these three groups. Uh, in reality, there will be more than one person per group. So let's jump back into the console and create these groups and then we will assign different users and different policies to these groups. Uh, so for this, we are assuming uh, for the developer group, we'll have access to read, write, and execute on Lambda, Dynamo, and S3, and the tester group will have access to execute Lambda. So we are back into the console. Let's click this groups button. We are going to create a new group. So we will create admin, Click next step. And what policy you are going to attach to this? You guessed it, administrator access, create group. We're gonna create another group, in this case, developer. And the developer needs Lambda, Dynamo, and S3. So Lambda, Dynamo, and S3. Okay, and then we're gonna create our last group, which is tester, and this group should only have Lambda execution. So now, these groups are ready. We, now we have to put user under these groups. So we click this link on the left. So in your personal account, you probably logged in as root, but in real life, you create an IAM user and then you log in with that IAM user. A IAM user is an entity that you create in AWS to represent the person or application that uses it to interact with AWS. A user in AWS consists of a name and credentials. So let's create some users. 
So we need three users, Tina, Bob, and Susan. We click add user, username Tina, and then we are just gonna give, it doesn't matter for this demo, auto-generated password, there you go. Click permissions. Okay, and now here it asks you, add user to group. Let's assign Tina to administrator group. So Tina has to use that link and the password to log in as the IAM user Tina, and then she will have admin access. We're gonna show this in action uh, for the developer group. Similarly, we're gonna create Bob, and we're gonna assign Bob to developer. Let's try to sign in as Bob and see if Bob has access to anything else. Remember, according to the slide, Bob should have only access to Lambda, Dynamo, and S3. So I opened the link in the incognito window and I typed in the username Bob and the password and click sign in. Okay, Bob should have access to S3. Let's go to S3. Yeah, so Bob can go to S3 and uh, do stuff. Now let's see if Bob can do anything in EC2. Remember, Bob only has access to S3, DynamoDB, and Lambda. So let's go to EC2, and you can already see Bob is getting a lot of messages that we generally don't get. Anyway, uh, Bob is brave, so we're gonna click Launch Instance, and we're gonna try to select the AMI, and you can see you are not authorized to perform this operation. So our policy attached to group is working. And same way you will create IAM user and Susan and assign it to group tester. Now let's take a look at scenario two, where this EC2 needs access to all these services. So one thing to note, policies cannot be attached to EC2 or any other AWS services directly they must be included in an AWS service role, and that role can be attached to AWS service such as EC2. So what is the definition of the role? An IAM role is similar to an IAM user that we saw in the last example, in that it is an AWS identity with permission policies that determine what the identity can and cannot do in AWS. So if we want to go over this diagram, if this EC2 has to access this S3, let's say you want to run this command AWS S3 LS, what it has to have is the role attached to EC2 has to have a policy to access S3. Now let's extend this. Let's say your application that's running in EC2 needs to read Dynamo. So what does this role need to have? You guessed it right. This role needs to have a policy attached to it which can read Dynamo. And if the application wants to write to Dynamo, you need a policy that will allow to write to Dynamo and then you have to attach that policy to this role and this role to EC2. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, if I logged in as an admin group or administrator or root user, which most of you are when you log into your private account, can't my EC2 access everything? Nope, you have to tell EC2 what role it can run with. This separation of permissions between user roles and service role is necessary to reduce blast radius when bad code is running on your EC2 and it is also useful to enforce more granular control. For example, there are two developer teams, project team A and project team B. They are sharing one AWS account. However, team A's application in EC2 uses Dynamo S3 and team B's application running in another EC2 uses RDS. They can use the same developer IAM group to log into AWS and use EC2 roles to define access to other AWS services. So let's try this in console. So we are back to IAM console. This time we are going to click roles. Now we're gonna click create role and it kind of describes you as well. Choose the service that will use this role. EC2, allow EC2 instances to call AWS services on your behalf. 
So let's click EC2, click permissions, and then here you have to say which policies you're gonna attach to this role. So let's say we put S3, let's give it Amazon S3 full access, uh, skip the tags for now, role name. So we give the role the name EC2 to S3 full access, click create role. Now let's try to spin up an EC2. Click launch instance. So this is the screen where you can assign the role to the EC2 while creating. But don't worry, once you create the EC2, you can change it later as well. So for now, I'm gonna keep the IAM role as none. So I'm going to launch. Okay, our EC2 instance is up and we are SSH'd in. Let's try our command. So we get an error, unable to look at credentials. Now we're gonna go and change the IAM role in the EC2. So we come back to our console, we select our EC2, click Actions, and then select Attach Replace IAM Role, and we find our role, S3 Full Access. There we go. Click Apply, Close. Okay, it should be instantaneous. So we're gonna go back to our terminal and try the same S3 command. Type the same command. Here we go. Now it can list the S3 buckets. And if your EC2 needs access to other services, all you have to do is attach more policies to this role. All right guys, that is the video. Hopefully this video helps in your AWS journey. Please smash that like button and click subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.